Based on true events, siblings are imprisoned for years, believing there's nothing but demons outside their home. One night, River wakes up and checks on her brother, Prairie, who's chained up. Afterward, she meets with their younger brother, Forrest. While their parents are asleep, River undoes a bolt in the window before escaping with Forrest. However, their parents, Ty and Laura, notice their escape and chase them, so the two desperately run for their freedom. Twenty years ago, a runaway Laura overheard Ty preaching to the homeless. He paused when he saw a man talking to a hesitant Laura before pulling the woman away. The stranger took Laura to his tent, giving her illegal medicine for her services. Before he could, however, Ty pulled him out and beat him. That evening, Laura joined her savior in the homeless camp. Laura admitted that she put her family through hell and wished they'd forgive her if she returned. Ty implied that she didn't need forgiveness since her family was at fault. He claimed that he could see the torment her parents did to her, even when Laura denied his accusations. He insisted that her parents made her forget about the horrors to prevent her from meeting her destiny, which was to lead the Lambs of God with him. Years later, the two were married with four children and another one on the way. On River's first day at grade school, her father worried that she'd be corrupted. Laura assured Ty that their older children, Rain and Meadow, would guide their sister. At school, however, the siblings were ridiculed. During lunch, they only had each other until another girl, Andrea, asked to join them. The siblings became uncomfortable with the friendly girl, but River's eyes widened when she saw Andrea's packed lunch. Noticing that they only had one sandwich to share, Andrea offered some of hers. Rain refused, citing that the less they put in their body, the more room there was for their spirit. With that, Andrea puts away her lunch and declared that she could feel her spirit. Having found a friend, the siblings beg the hesitant Laura to invite Andrea to their home. At their home, the kids played hide and seek. Andrea went to their parents' room, but River and Meadow warned her that they weren't allowed there. However, River realized this meant that Rain would never check there, so she went in with Andrea, despite Meadow's protest. This led Andrea to discover the only TV in the house, which her friend called the Devil's Window, which her parents used to learn the demon's ways. Andrea laughed at this before switching the TV on, making River curious. However, Rain and their father soon caught them. After their friend left, the siblings heard their father scolding Laura, asserting that they shouldn't be taking their children to the enemy anymore. The mother argued that the children needed to learn how to live, but Ty asserted that he didn't allow her to invite an enemy into their home. Given this, the man punished his pregnant wife while their children could only cry. As Laura treated her bruises with ice, River urged her to see a doctor. However, Ty told them that doctors put poisons in them. Laura assured her daughter that all their father did was out of love. The next day, Tyler declared that the children weren't allowed to go to school anymore, given that the serpent only had to smile at them to fool them. River defended Andrea, but Rain accused her friend of tempting her. The youngest, Prairie, demanded to go to preschool, leading to the siblings arguing, so their mother walked away in tears. Still, Ty used this to prove that their enemies had taken possession of their children. He ordered his wife to drive the devil out, otherwise he'd think that the devil was in her. With no choice, Laura returned and sent their kids to their room. When Prairie ignored her, Ty pushed the woman to save her children. Conflicted, Laura pushed Prairie softly, but this doesn't appease her husband. She then moved to hit him, so River shielded her brother, receiving the slap instead. Immediately, the woman apologized, but the moment was interrupted when she felt her contractions. The others quickly helped Laura to her bedroom while Ty reminded River that they were in a great war, so they must stand together, even if it hurt. After the birth, Ty claimed that he dreamed about their new brother, Forrest, being the shepherd who will guide the lambs, so their children must protect him. He then declared that only he and Laura could go out from then on because everyone outside their home was a serpent. Years later, a grown-up river joined Meadow as Ty questioned Prairie. The young man insisted he wasn't wrong, so their father asserted that he needed to be a good example for their youngest sister, Summer. Forrest defended that his brother struggled to breathe in the room, but Laura slapped him in response. Ty asked why it was wrong to open the window, so Forrest mumbled that doing so would let the devil's breath infect them. The father then asked the adult Rain what they needed to do, so he claimed that they must cleanse their brother. With that, Ty handed his belt to his wife, but before she could strike, the man noticed Meadow closing her eyes in fear. He asserted that turning away meant she was also infected, so he ordered Meadow to be punished too. Afterward, Ty bound Prairie to his bed before going to work as if nothing happened. This left the children to study together while Laura watched TV in her bedroom. However, Summer refused to study since they hadn't eaten yet, but Rain insisted that they couldn't disturb Laura while she was learning the demon's ways. That evening, however, River and Forrest broke into their locked kitchen cabinets to take apples and shared them with siblings, though Rain refused. 
Tai noticed the missing fruits the next day, so he interrogated Rain and Meadow. When the two refused to reveal who stole the fruits, Tai promised that confessing would prove that they were ready to leave their younger siblings while they were away. With that, they'd give them cell phones to communicate with their parents. This tempted the siblings, yet they still won't confess. With that, Tai decided to punish Summer since she was the youngest and the weakest. Horrified, the two were forced to tell them the truth. Soon, Forrest and River were tied up to be starved for seven days. As the others went down for breakfast, River shot Meadow an angry look, leading her to feel guilty. The parents then gave Rain and Meadow their cell phones, instructing them not to let the younger siblings touch them. One night, Prairie escaped his binds and attempted to jump out the window, only to be taken back by their father. Ty then chained him to his bed and bolted the windows, not knowing that Meadow was watching online videos on her phone. One video showed a man playing his guitar while urging others to share their music too. This gave her an idea. She went to River to apologize, but her sister was seething in anger. As a peace offering, Meadow shared that her phone would allow them to share their songs. She promised to let her sister use it when she was free. Days later, River and Forrest were finally freed. Laura went to embrace her daughter, but the young woman refused her touch. Soon, Meadow recorded River's song, assuring her that the phone couldn't hurt them as long as they never shared their address. With that, they posted her video online. One night, Meadow told River that someone was interested in her song. With this, she led her into the closet to talk to the man, Tristan. The man sympathized with her lyrics, unaware that the walls that imprisoned her in her song were real. Still, this made River smile. However, when Tristan asked for a new song, she became nervous and quickly ended the call. Still, Tristan kept messaging her, so River talked to him again. She asked how he sympathized with her song, so the man revealed that he had a rare disease that kept him from going outside. When Tristan asked what her story was, River got scared again. To appease her, the man sang her his own song and made her laugh. However, Laura heard her daughter in the closet. To spare her from punishment, Laura quickly called River to help her with chores, alerting her to stop her conversation before Ty arrived. Later, Ty privately revealed to his wife that her father passed away, bringing the woman to tears. As he read the eulogy online, Laura also learned that her mother died years ago, but he skipped the part of the article that suggested they pray for Laura's return until their deaths. Instead, Ty convinced his wife that her family had forgotten about her, thus convincing Laura that she had nothing but him and their children. One night, Forrest felt pain, so he used cold water to ease it. However, Laura scolded her son for washing himself when their father hadn't told them to. Forrest defended that he was in pain, but the woman harmed him. Hearing this, Prairie screamed, but this only led him to get chained in another room. Distraught, River later called Tristan, sharing her worries that serpents had infected her brothers. She continued rambling about how their parents kept them inside to protect them from demons. Alarmed, Tristan asked how long they've been in the house, so River confessed that they hadn't left for nine years. This horrified her friend, so Tristan instructed her to call the police. However, the woman was convinced that the police were demons. She asserted that they must only obey their parents since it was God's orders. Still, Tristan argued that God's words were to treat each other with love, not punishment. When River confirmed that she sometimes heard bells outside, Tristan assumed that there was a church nearby, so he asked for their address so he could call their local church to help them. Recalling Meadow's warning not to let anyone know their address, River was convinced he was also a demon. Just then, Ty discovered her using Meadow's phone. Immediately, the sisters were cuffed along with the beaten up prairie. For weeks, the parents continued as if nothing was wrong. However, her children's condition also drove Laura mad. So she soon declared that Christmas was coming early since it was the only holiday they were allowed to celebrate. They released the sisters to help prepare, but when they checked on Forrest, he was still in pain. Worried, River asked their father to take him to the doctor. Instead, Ty used oils and balms to soothe his son. This didn't help as Forrest got worse. With no choice, the sisters read their medicine book and discovered that their brother had acute appendicitis, which could kill him. During dinner, the sisters begged their father to let Forrest see a doctor. This angered Ty, insisting that his children were still infected. He decided that they must all starve to be purified, but this prompted the hungry Summer to steal food. Seeing this, he pushed his daughter. That night, Summer was cuffed as punishment while Forrest was still in pain. Just then, River heard the church bells, reminding her of what Tristan had said. With that, she asked Rain to get her a screwdriver so she could take Forrest to the church to save him. When Rain refused, River wondered if it was worth saving their brother from demons when he was dead. This convinced her brother to help. However, on the night of their escape, Rain got nervous and alerted their parents, betraying his sibling. At present, River and Forrest run for their lives and hide behind another house until their parents leave. They soon see the church, so the two rush toward it. However, this alarmed nearby officers Kenner and Raoul, 
who revealed that the church won't be open until the morning. Seeing their disheveled appearance, they worry that someone has tried to hurt them. With no choice, River shares how their parents had been punishing them. This horrifies the officers, but they suspect that the young woman hurt her brother since her story is too far-fetched. Because of this, they separate the two to interrogate Forrest alone. Scared that they'll harm his sister, Forrest lies that they were just playing a game. Just then, Ty and Laura arrive, convincing the officers that River always makes up stories to take her brother away. Conflicted with who to trust, River plays along and joins her parents. Still, the officers ask Ty for identification in case they need to follow up on the case. Because of this, Ty later decides to take his family away, telling them that the demons know their address now. His wife begs him to take their son to the emergency room, but he also accuses her of being infected. Suddenly, Forrest grunts in pain, but when they check on him, he declares that the pain has finally disappeared. Hopeful, Laura leads her kids to the van, but Kenner arrives with a welfare representative, Gloria. Because of this, Ty quietly instructs his children on what to do. Soon, they welcome the visitors just as Forrest's pain returns. Noticing their smells, Gloria asks if they've bathed. So Rain lies that they've had plumbing problems, so they couldn't shower yet. While Ty takes Gloria and the officer to the kitchen, Forrest goes to the bathroom. To their horror, his sisters find him in pain with a high fever. Meanwhile, the visitors ask to check upstairs, but Ty asks for a search warrant. The officer promises to get one, making the parents nervous. As Ty leads the visitors away, Laura and Rain check on Forrest. Noticing his fever, the desperate mother asks her older son to research what to do. They soon learn that the pain stopping for a while means that Forrest's appendix has burst, so he's now suffering sepsis. Despite this, Ty finds the rest and asserts that his son must be purified. With that, the man frees Prairie before leading everyone to the van. For the first time, however, Rain stands up to his father, demanding to get help for their brother. This leads his father to beat him. When the others, including his wife, refuse to follow him, Ty then puts a knife to Rain's throat, reminding them that Abraham had to sacrifice his son to prove his faith. Enraged, Prairie leaps to his father, grabs the knife, and races it over him. Thankfully, Meadows stops him while River rushes outside to ask for help. This finally frees the siblings while their parents are arrested. Soon, Forrest survives the surgery but goes into a coma. Angered, Prairie lashes out until the officers restrain him. This convinces Gloria that the siblings have been traumatized. Thus, they're not ready for an interrogation. Detective Cortez argues that without the siblings' statements, they can't hold the parents for long. Kenner also points out that she saw Forrest returning to his mother when they found him at the church, weakening their case. With that, they finally interrogate the kids individually. Given that Forrest is in a coma, Rain is convinced that his father was right, while Summer refuses to talk, thinking that she'll be infected. In contrast, Prairie is honest about his father's treatment, but his statement becomes unreliable when he shares that he saw a goat before he attacked Ty, making the officers think he's mad. On the other hand, Meadow can't stop crying, so she insists that she'll agree to whatever River tells them. Finally, Cortez talks to River. However, she's also conflicted about what to believe, wondering if the man is telling her what she wants to hear so he can lure her to the devil. The siblings end up in a welfare facility where Tristan calls River, having learned their case through the news. River admits that she feels guilty because her brother's condition might be because she did what Tristan told her, or she did it too late. The man assures her that she saved her siblings, but the woman isn't convinced. She also refuses to speak ill about her parents since it's against the Proverbs. However, Tristan heard that Laura went against her father to save them, so the man encourages River to speak to her mother. With that, the eldest siblings visit Laura. River admits that they're hesitant to testify against their parents since they're starting to believe that Ty was right about Forrest. Seeing how her children are still afraid, Laura reveals that they specifically didn't teach them parts of the Bible that would allow them to think for themselves. The mother admits that everything they've taught them was a lie, wishing to free her children. This shatters her children's world. Finally deciding what to believe in, River soon represents her siblings before the judge. They acknowledge that it's too soon for them to make decisions since there's a world that they must learn about, so they've decided to tread slowly. They also acknowledge that Laura was Ty's first victim and that he was raised by parents who loved him. Therefore, he had no excuse to do what he'd done. Still, River is thankful that he taught them about the fire in their spirits, which made them stronger. Eventually, they begin exploring further, even returning to school to determine what paths to take. Forrest also wakes from his coma and joins his siblings as they journey in their new world together. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.